Hey viewers, hi, this is Sandeep Nath and good to have you join us again today, 9 p.m. like every day through the month of June. We're going to be talking about the concept of renewalism. For those of you for whom this is the first show, let me just bring on what is renewalism in a runner below. It's all inspired by a book called Renewal, which you see on my side. And it's about renewing oneself at this level of one's own body, mind, spirit, one's interactions with others and with the planet, and one's role in uh, renewing systems that we operate with for the benefit of the planet. Now, some of these uh, we have seen happening, the, the changes in systems and the changes in uh, our own behaviors on account of uh, the lockdown. We've seen uh, minimalistic living. We've seen uh, changes in the way we use uh, our cars and our uh, technologies. But what's interesting about the whole concept of renewalism is that there are two things that are very interesting. One, that this is a book about 30 habits that you can proactively create in order to renew yourself and the planet and you play a vital role in doing that the second thing very interesting is that this book though it was released just this week it was written in uh, november december last year and uh, way before the coronavirus uh, and its implications came known to us and how our habits have changed as a consequence so this was actually through a channeling i happen to be a medium for uh, guru pranachandra who is the, the central character of this book. And it is a discourse by the guru, which brings out these habits. So I urge you to grab a copy at renewalism.com. And uh, every day, like I was saying, we have these uh, habits under discussion because a lot of people have uh, confessed that it's not easy to create or change habits. And uh, though Guru Pranachandra believes that it is and is given a methodology for creating any kind of habit like that, I wanted to have this show with a new guest every day so that we can A, understand the practical aspects of the habits and B, we can also see how we can nudge ourselves in that direction because we know that that direction works. Thanks to the COVID crisis, we know that if we are more mindful of uh, the way we use our cars, for instance, we can have a clean atmosphere. Till that time, we always thought, well, it's the industries that are polluting. Till that time, we always thought that, well, it's the buses, but actually it's private vehicles, which the government has been saying, we've observed odd and even days. And you know, yesterday we spoke uh, a lot about the role of technology and uh, telecommutes. So today we're going to continue this aspect of technology in another dimension. Again, to do with you in your house and with the industry as well. But this is about solar power and about energy and water in general. I'm thrilled to have with us uh, Mr. Gagan Garg, who's going to be joining us on this conversation. And uh, Gagan is uh, an expert in the area of alternative renewable uh, technologies and fuels. So there we have Gagan. Hi. And I'm going to remove evening, the book Sandeep. from between Thank us, you. Gagan. Good evening, Sandeep. Thank you for having me well, on your show. Good to have you here. Pleasure. Fantastic. Fantastic for you to have made time for this. And uh, I, I'm going to hope that uh, as we go along the show, our viewers put in questions and uh, their thoughts about what, uh, what are the impediments to the habit that I'm going to discuss with you. And since uh, we're going to be talking about a specific habit, I'm going to read it out from the book itself, read it verbatim, okay? The habit is follow the 10 minute rule for power and water. He says, now let us not forget that we are talking about a renewal of the planet with us in it. Apart from what we have been doing over, over the centuries with plastics, pollution, garbage, and landfills, which are extremely destructive, the way we have been misusing energy and water are also issues of large concern. Now, that, uh, Gagan, is where the starting point lies. We have not really given 
enough attention to the way that we have been increasing our energy consumption. In fact, India stands at a very interesting point according to sources uh, that uh, Guru Pranachandra quotes, which I got from the net. We stand at a point where our consumption is one fifth of the US and five times that of our neighboring uh, reasonably developing countries, third world. So why is it that uh, we are having to use five times more energy than uh, Pakistan, for instance, and why is it that the US uses that much more? I mean, what is it that drives our energy patterns and why, why are we going through the roof? Thank you, Sandeep, again for having me. Um, I think that uh, one of the barometers for development, has, one of the barometers has been uh, consumption of energy per capita. So um, India is uh, not as bad as some of the other developed nations. In the past, we were consuming 160 of the power of a developed nation. I believe now that number could have come down to 125. So um, there is a positive correlation here, but uh, we have to still be mindful about you know our sources of energy and what we are doing in the world. So uh, first, there was a urgent need to get rid of uh, fossil fuel-based power, like for the coal plant. Right. So solar was definitely a solution providing cleaner, non-polluting uh, energy visibly up front. So, right. But, uh, you know, that that's uh, very nice that so you brought in the aspect of solar so early in the conversation because that's exactly where I wanted to go with it. While it is better than fossil fuels, there is an allegation uh, which uh, Guru Pranachandra makes in response to a question that was thrown at him that uh, Guruji now we have uh, solar technologies they are cheap and they are uh, available and uh, they are renewable and uh, clean so where is the problem why can't we use more I mean it's, it's really interesting that you use the word barometer there because the barometer of development <laughs> is the reason for uh, the complete destruction so it's actually the development of destruction in a sense. But uh, that's that's my viewpoint. Let's continue with the story on development and saying that solar power is the solution. The Guru says, uh, do you have any means of uh, recycling solar panels after their life of 20, 25 years when they, they are actually toxic because they've run out of those ions that uh, the charge uh, they produce? Now, is that is that true? Are we are we bereft of any solutions? And what's really the thinking on uh, from the industry point of view? So I was uh, in the middle of fossil fuel country. I was in the Middle East. Very unique at that. One happened to be a nuclear scientist. The other was somebody working on the Mars mission. By a so when wow. I was, they knew I'm from the solar background, and then that's they brought up saying that you know, this material uh, can be extremely hazardous after what you do with it. That is what got me thinking about uh, you know, this whole pride that we take in renewable energy and being uh, you know, uh, holier than thou. It is in holier than thou. That's right. And uh, that's when it got me thinking that you know what is what do we do with this after it's done. So uh, if I can share some stats with uh, you and your viewers, uh, presently we are about 600 gigawatts of solar installation. That is roughly into 1000 megawatts. So we're talking about 600,000 megawatts of solar power that we have taken away from coal and other. In, in but India. But we don't realize this is the world. This is the world. Right. We're talking about 600,000 megawatts of solar and growing tremendously if not at a 15 to 30 percent growth and it will continue to grow that way so <clears throat> um, normally we do not think about what will happen to this when these solar panels are done with have a life for 20 25 years and i just want to share that behind every gigawatt of power there is 70000 metric tons of hazardous waste 
that we will give to our future generation who will have to deal with it so the 600 gigawatts that i'm talking about is 42 million tons is our gift as of 2020 to our future generation and there is no incentive in recycling it okay there is no commercial benefit in recycling it oops so we need to bring in the consciousness today that what we procure it needs to have a better means of making sure it doesn't end up in a land so not only in dow my god uh, th- th- that's shocking i mean the statistics that you shared uh, are 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 actually shocking they're not part of the book because uh, in fact he says uh, in the book you know that uh, you are well educated and you would already have the statistics but uh, th- this is this is incredible so now from what you're saying if if uh, i i understand that right we have to get very conscious as the word you use and this this is what renewalism is about it's about increasing human consciousness we've got to be conscious about our energy consumption and i i kind of see now why uh, you yourself are uh, i mean i am tempted to switch off the lights around me <laughs> you know but uh, so, that's what we've got to do because because uh, this is wasteful and uh, i don't know i i am doing it for uh, for for the show but the the major appliances in every house that use power what would those be i mean i can imagine air conditioners that would be necessary wouldn't you think definitely so air conditioners so Uh, I think you have frozen the yeah, event. We need to be mindful of individuals or community or society. We need to be mindful of how companies will just because it's coming. There's one of the aspects. There are other aspects. For example, when they first got launched, there were big concerns about them being carcinogenic, and though they have reduced our load of energy. significantly um i do not have a clear answer whether they are carcinogenic or not so uh we do buy cheap imports that's what it just means that sell they will buy so we need to find conscious producers uh will give us product which is good for us that i've come across for instance uh we use fly ash in construction which was earlier a pollutant of the power plant right uh, uh, that uh, and they leach out and how much do they contribute towards increasing cancer and the likes the generation to tell us well we don't want future like generations to telling that <laughs> that would be too late isn't it if future generations are to tell us how how we spoil their health but um, tell me practically because i was just uh, uh, trying to see the the aspect of uh, how we can be conscious of uh, our our energy consumption now the rule the habit by itself is the 10 minute rule he says you use your air conditioner but you use it for 10 minutes uh, i'm sorry we lost you a little over there because uh, i think the video had frozen for a bit so i i just uh, repeat a bit of what you had said about uh, uh, you know the carcinogens but uh, net net what i concluded from there is that uh, there there is more damage than uh, is being spoken of and that reminds me in fact a couple of months ago there was this uh, movie which i would uh, recommend viewers to also see uh, it's called planet of the humans where the the uh, jeff gibbs the director he does some intense research it's a documentary on uh, various alternative sources of fuel like fly ash and solar and wind and how we not really being told the, the right story and gavan you are uh, making, making a big point here i thank you for being so open about it 
that this is not the whole story. The story lies in uh, reducing consumption and uh, keeping to the 10 minute rule. And I, I can imagine, I mean, I do that myself. Uh, we, we switch on the air conditioner for 10 minutes and that just pulls the room down enough for us to get by another hour. So, uh, and likewise in the nights and this is June. So it's probably good for uh, any time of the year. But, uh, you know, my, my wife is, uh, she loves cooking and we have some recipes that take 40 minutes in the oven. So we're still trying to crack that problem. But all I can say is that we have some consciousness around it. And uh, we, we try to see how we can uh, possibly uh, use more of uh, uh, the, the cooking gas than of uh, electricity for those 40 minutes, you know. So, so those are the like directions in which I am expecting. Yeah, yeah. Sunlight based cookers, they are pretty handy, I would think. You can slow cook, keep all your nutrition in there, zero power, no industrial manufacturing of panels. So there could be many, many ideas once we all brainstorm. Wonderful, wonderful. In fact, that's the point. Uh, you know, everybody has some answers, but we just have to put our brains together. And that's where stuff like renewalism clubs and renewalism uh, groups uh, in existing fraternities play a very important role like in the solar fraternity perhaps you know if you could take this book across to uh, the fraternity and just ask them to examine so what is it as responsible manufacturers that we can advise uh, our users to do with these products you know and uh, maybe at a consumer level recycling is possible without the landfill you know, you, you could probably use them as a tabletops and things like that after 20 years or I don't know, yeah, yeah. but yeah, each one to his own. Well, there could be roofing materials. So something like that. You, know, you can have all kinds of applications. Roofing. For it. Yeah. And uh, another point I'd like to highlight through your medium is that when we have these large solar power plants, 500 acres, 100 megawatts, we need to be more mindful about the ecology. Need to have uh, the vegetation in place. You know, we come in, we bulldoze everything, we make them uh, barren uh, spaces for birds and animals, and that is not the right way to do it. You know, so we need to right. blend in that ecology, plant stuff so that we can prevent soil erosion, uh, not disrupt that habitat, whatever it is. So <clears throat> there are always two sides of a coin, and I think that uh, the more conscious we are of certain things, and Corona has taught us that, you know, it taught us that uh, when Mother Nature wants to fix something, it shows the way. <laughs> yeah, don't tell us about how Mother Nature fixes things. She can be quite, quite uh, locked down, Isha. <laughs> We are very fixed, I think, for quite a while now. <laughs> yep, yep. So that's a point uh, which, again, uh, is very interesting for our, our viewers to know that in the construction of a solar power plant, there are so many acres and acres of um, trees that have to be chopped down or, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not it's not the simplest solution. Groundwater is used up and uh, to clean the panels. And so water that ought to have been used for agriculture or for trees is getting used for cleaning panels and is not, uh, uh, they don't have mechanisms to reuse it. So the solution is just in controlling uh, power and water. Now, speaking of water, uh, since you're from Hyderabad, uh, no, Pune, sorry, Gagan. Um, how, how's the water situation in Pune? I mean, Chennai was in a bad shape and there was problems. Yeah. I, I think you've got a very, very important point about using uh, portable drinking water to clean panels. So we are aware how the world's shortage of water, especially places like Bangalore, uh, places in South Africa, they're going to go dry. We all, all of us have tanker water coming to our mm. homes. We definitely have to be more mindful about conserving water because the actual uh, available drinking water in the world is minuscule compared to. Um, there are technologies right, where right. you can uh, look at 
using humidification methods of converting atmospheric water. Uh, luckily, we are not in a place where water is so acutely uh, short that we need to uh, dig into some of those technologies today. But I think that the savior is not technology. Mm -hmm. The savior has to be conservation. Mindful on, on that note, I think we, we can conclude today's uh, discussion because th there is nothing more important than knowing who the savior is and uh, the savior is mindfulness. Awesome. In fact, uh, further in this book, uh, in this chapter, uh, he talks about the 10 minute rule even for water. And, you know, one of the things water generally, we don't have baths for more than 10 minutes and I would urge people not to. But uh, there are, there are uh, uh, consumptions of water at the back of the air conditioner, for example, or uh, through the RO. And reusing that by tapping those pipes into a bucket is uh, important because then you get uh, water for uh, domestic cleaning or for stuff like that. And uh, that, uh, that then takes care of potential scarcity. So on one hand, like Gagan said, you could use uh, new technologies, humidification and stuff like that. On the other, you can conserve whatever you're wasting. So anything that's draining for more than 10 minutes, like the RO, for example, is uh, a big drain. You just watch the 10 minute rule and uh, be mindful of that. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, I think on, on that note, uh, is, is there anything that you'd like to leave our viewers with? I mean, the savior was a savior, <laughs> but any uh, last thank thoughts? Thank you, uh, for the privilege of having me on your show and getting an opportunity to talk about this. Um, I'm also going to be looking at what sort of habits can I cultivate? Can I learn from your book about renewal and looking forward to renewalism. Uh, bigger than veganism and uh, hopefully uh, I can also contribute in my little way. Thank you Sandeep again. I look forward to that. I, I really uh, appreciate your saying so on the show and inspiring people to do the same, to lead little groups and uh, making it happen. But thank you so much Gagan. With that, on that note, we'll sign off for the day. I'll see you viewers tomorrow, same page, 9 p.m. Uh we've got a discussion on time. All right, if you're short of time, make time for this one. Take care.